Hello guys, I'm Angie, and uh, this will be uh, approximately 20 minutes um, of specific footwork. Um, the assumption is that you are watching this and following me as you are already a little bit warmed up, uh, either after a longer workout or just doing the warm up before, which I will not focus on. So you will be after a few shoulder rotations, a few nice good breaths, some ankle foot rotations, some hip rotations, some stretches, and you will be ready to go directly into the work. The equipment that we need uh, today will be um, a kitchen towel. So a towel that is not too thick and not too big, something approximately this size, a stretchy band, a flexible band, a thera band, any of these resistance band sometimes called. Um, you may want two of them, but one will work as well. Um, a tennis ball, we will work with this for a little bit of self massaging. And um, as we come uh, later on into the work, I will um, mention that it's best if you are doing this workout in a carpeted room more carpeted floor. Um, if not, which is my case, I don't have a carpet here, I will use a much later on um, a yoga blanket, a Mexican blanket to have something that is not so, so uh, smooth and so slippery under the tennis ball. Uh, I will go barefoot because especially to where I want you to also see how my feet are moving. It is allowing best movement if you are barefoot. And then in the end, the grip the towel exercise absolutely requires you to be barefoot. So we will start with lifting the heel on one foot, bringing it back down, lifting the heel on the other foot. So we will do this a few times. And as you keep doing that, I will mention that this brings your foot into a shape, into an action that is called dorsiflexion. Sometimes we just say flex the foot. The action that brings you into this position as we do it now is lifting the heel. So the action is the contraction in the back of the leg, the contraction of the calf muscle. We'll do one more on each foot. Lift the heel, bring it down. Lift the heel, bring it down. Then we can bring the foot in a similar, almost identical position by lifting the toes only and bringing them back down. So I lift the toes, bring them back down, go from one foot to the other. The heel remains on the floor and the ball of the foot remains on the floor. The toes are curling up, coming back down. And we'll do two more on each leg, on each foot for four, three, go slowly, two, and one, perfect. Now what we will do next is the same movement, but we will do it simultaneously. When one heel goes up, the other goes down. So you have a little bit of coordination here between the feet. And it is a part of the action that we do when we walk, right? When we step. I'm taking also my upper body front and back as I bring one heel up and down. And you may notice maybe the difference between the feet and last time here. And then we'll go toes up and down, working at the same time on both feet, but doing the opposite action. So here, this one, this is where usually most of us have more difficulty and more difference that we can uh, notice between the two feet. So it's doing a, a completely different action. Here we are contracting not the calves, but the front, the muscles at the front of the leg and the muscles in the top of the foot. So since often, if there is a plantar fasciitis or a foot drop, we find the, especially this movement difficult. This is why I want us to try these exercises with a stretchy band, with a TheraBand. 
So we will cross one ankle over the um, knee. And I suggest you start this and other exercises on the foot that is stronger, healthier, but, but stronger, that feels stronger, that, that does this work easier. So I will place the band um, across the ball of the foot and the back of the or bottom of the toes, not against the arch of the foot. And I'm sitting in an armchair, not in a regular exercise chair. The reason being that I want, sorry, yeah, I, um, I want the, the, the elbow to rest. And this is for the next exercise. So actually on this exercise where the band is against the back, the, the, the bottom of the foot, I want the leg stretched in the front and the, each side of the band will be in one hand. And I'm gonna push away and come back to not neutral really, but pulling up a little bit. So I'm pushing away ball of the foot and toes and then pulling in. And you notice that I'm not, this would be natural, neutral. So I want to go beyond the neutral. I'm going again out and in. And I will do three more so that I have a set of eight in total, two more. Last one. And I will go to the other foot and I will not repeat today. But if you are doing this at home and you know that you need these exercises, you feel that they benefit you, you want to do three sets of eight. You move from one foot to the other and then repeat another eight on each foot and then another set of eight. Go slowly. Four more. This is not a fast movement. You want to go just maximum range of motion that you can do here that you have. Three more, two, pull it beyond neutral, and one. Beautiful. And the next one, this is where, sorry for my confusion earlier, this is where you want to cross ankle over knee. And you now come with the TheraBand uh, around the top of the foot and the Toes, again, I am not mid foot, but I am at the top third of the foot. And I will hold both ends of the strap of the band in the opposite hand and rest my elbow into the armchair, into the armrest. This way, this shoulder relaxes. If you are sitting in a regular chair, this elbow is up in the air, you will probably feel the tendency of taking this shoulder up. So instead I want you to have rest under support under the elbow so that you can keep the chest, the chest nice and open and the action here will be a lot of contraction in the front of the leg and top of the foot because i want to take the toes and the foot away from this hand and bring it back to neutral to rest and take it out it's not easy to do you really feel um the front of the leg the front of the leg the top of the foot working three and four and i have four more Again, going slowly, three more, two more, and one more. Very good. We'll do the same on the other foot. This is like a four, figure four, the shape of the number four that you cross ankle over knee. And if crossing ankle over knee is not something that you do because of perhaps a hip replacement, this exercise, you'll be limited in what you can do. You can go maybe a little lower. It, it will not be so easy to do it. Again, opposite hand holds the strap. I'm at the front or top third of my foot, elbow resting and I'll go away. And then I mean, you will feel the difference again on the foot that is weaker. In my case, it is my left foot. I go here last, three, five more. Four, three, two, hold it a little bit here, and one. Very good. So relaxing for a moment. Once my feet are on the floor, I wanna go into a few circles here. The circles that I'm doing are on the perimeter of the foot. So I go with both feet in the same way in, up on the toes, out, and around the heel and come up. See what you can do here. See how the feet are moving. Are they doing the same thing? I'm going in reverse. 
with four circles and three and two and one. And next we're gonna go, um, we, don't, we don't need the, the TheraBand any longer. So on one foot, I will come up on the ball of the foot, but then I wanna try and come on the tip of the toes. This is really like a kind of like a ballerina on a point shoe. It's a lot of arching in the sole of the foot. Since we don't do this a lot, uh, you might get a cramp. So it's normal, don't get scared. It can happen that you get a cramp in the foot or in the calf. Just bring the heel down, massage a little bit and stretch. Do the opposite action. Stretch, stretch, it will go away. And then you can try again. So we'll, I will do three repetitions a few times on each foot. All of the foot, a lot of curling here. All of the foot again, heel down. Two more, ball of the foot very tips as much as I can tips of the toes ball and heel and the third time first time the third time here and it will feel different on this foot I know ball of the foot for me this is harder ball of the foot and heel ball tip of the toes ball if you need to stop let's say a cramp happens of course just pause the video Stretch it, release it, and then come back. So second set, again, three times, ball and heel. Ball, tips of the toes, ball, heel. Third time in the second set, and up. You would feel that it opens a little more for you. It's a little easier to do, I hope. Tips of the toes, ball, other foot, ball, Tips of the toes, ball, and heel. And third time on this second set. Very good. So last time on this foot, I'm going up, ball of the foot and down. Those of you who want to try maybe something harder, you can do this standing, guys. You can be up in a squat and come here and up. Those of you standing might also want to come into squat up on the balls of the feet only. Don't go like ballerinas on both feet. I would not recommend that. Ball of the foot, heel. And I'll do it one more time here. Toes, ball of the foot and heel. Very good. And you can again come a little bit into rotations. And then we'll, we're gonna go not really straight to the front, but a little diagonally out. Extend the leg, point, flex, point, and come in. Once again, I'm doing it three times on one leg on one side and three times on the other. And once again, we're just three sets. Flex a lot, point a lot. Come back in other leg, point, flex, point, come back in, point and flex. This is the second time on this leg, point, flex, opening nicely more and more. Second set, flex, point, come back in, point, flex. So now I'm also moving my heel, my foot a little down and up and down and up and down and back in. Those of you who practice with me Monday mornings, you know that we do this hot potato kind of exercise. So this feels a little bit reminding of that type of exercise, point, and heel, and point, come back in. One more set of three on this leg. Really nicely lengthen the leg on the point and really nicely lift and flex and stretch the back of the leg out when you flex. One more time, point, flex, point, come back in. Last time, so you feel a little bit of a work also in your legs muscles, right? Which is great. Point, flex, point, and in, and one more, point, flex, point, and come back in, beautiful. So we will grab the, now we, will, we won't do the tennis ball now, we will do the kitchen towel. So I want the kitchen towel and possibly if, if you are on a smooth wood floor like I am, you probably will want to have, um, um, 
something like a blanket underneath. And then we're gonna put the kitchen towel, open it, open it up. And I'm, what I'm doing is an intense curling of the toes, stretch them up again, stretch them up, spread them out, then press them down and I curl them under. And I'm gonna try and lift this kitchen towel up. Once again, here your bigger quads, bigger leg muscles are also participating. And once again, uh, I will start on the leg and on the foot that is feeling that the work is easier. So I will do four times. Again, you can do more, especially since in the beginning, it might be that it will be very hard for you to pick up the towel. So it will feel like, ah, oh, messy, messy. But then keep doing it, it will happen. So for me on this other leg, I know it's harder. On this other foot, it's harder. Stretch them out, curl them up, then bring them down. And I'm starting to curl under grip and try lifting one. Go slowly up, place it down. So don't just lift it and that's it. Just bring it up, hold it there. See if you can maintain the grip. Bring it down a third time. Up and down. And I will only do four. You can do eight, 10 repetitions. In the beginning, you'll feel tired. Just do a little less and then gradually increase as you do this maybe a few times every week. So we are done with the towel and I'm gonna grab the tennis ball. And there are a few things we can do with the tennis ball. Since we are still um, working on strength and I left in this recorded um, sequence, I leave the massaging with the ball last. So we will do one more exercise that really strengthens here and helps us. I will place the tennis ball between the inner sides in kind of inner arches of the feet, but above the arches of the feet. It's somewhere between, not, not really between my ankles. You can have it also between the ankles, but it's a little more in the front. So it's between the front part of my ankle and then just above those inner arches. And then what I'm trying to do is just grip it a little bit and then try to lift up without losing the ball, and bring it down. And I'm bringing it up and down. So what would happen here if I have a lot of difference between how my feet are working? This will be the clearest feedback that I get because I will see that one foot is kind of really higher than the other one, right? This way or this way. And then it will be difficult to do it. It will be very visible, very clear feedback from the feet, from, from the sight. So that's okay. Don't lose hope. Don't be discouraged. You're gonna try slowly to bring that lower foot a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and then bring them both down and then try again. So you'll do a few repetitions, you'll rest as you need, try a few sets of that. And then the best part comes now we will place the ball on the carpet or the blanket that you have. And we start this nice self-massaging. I am going with front and back, front and back move, movements along the, the arch of the foot. So um, I think I mentioned that um, these exercises are really um, beneficial for everybody but they're in particular very good if you have inflammation of the fascia of the sole of the foot, what's called plantar fasciitis. And then that fascia is tight and, and rigid and the stretches that we did, the exercises that we did may help. Always, if you work with a doctor on any condition there, mention that you do these exercises, get the okay that it's, it's fine from the doctor. But in general, the self-massage or cross-massage will help. So I will go also a little under the bottom of the feet, uh, of the toes now, not just the arch of the feet. So I'm going as long as I can, as far as I can to the front, I'm under the heel. And as far as I can back under the back of the toes, the bottom of the toes. And then I can start a few circles. 
if I bring my, if I want more intensity in the sensation, I want more pressure, I want to bring my upper body over the knees, over the thighs. I'm with my hands here, I'm not pushing down on the leg, although you can do this on the knee, but it's my body weight, my upper body weight that will make a big difference. And go in circles in the other direction. And you can go with those circles in various different parts of the sole of the foot. You will feel when you need them more. Make sure you stretch that area under the toes. And then on the same foot, what I will do, I will do again the figure four or ankle over knee, if you're allowed to do that. And I can have the ball in the opposite hand and go another time, one more time on the sole of the foot, massaging there nicely, massaging all around. And you can have the other hand against the top of the foot, just kind of resisting. And then I move the ball into the other hand, same side hand like the foot. And I will massage the top of the foot where it's really helpful to go between those long toe bones, which are, or foot bones, they're connected to the toe bones. And um, you go between them, feels very, very uh, restorative, restoring, refreshing. With the other hand, I support the sole of the foot and I can push even a little bit so that I get more sensation from this self-massage, deep, deep, good massage. You can go all around the foot. So we'll do the same on this other foot and we will be done. So the other foot, I go front and back and I will feel different. It will feel different because what, the arch, the sole of one foot, the fascia of one foot will be different, will feel different than the other one. If I go a little longer, a little further out and closer in, I will reach the back of the heel and the back bottom of the toes. So just go here. You can do this. I very much encourage you to do this longer than just the duration of this little video. That is, we're probably now at 20 minutes. So I'll continue with a few circles here. Right there in the center of the arch of the foot feels wonderful to me. You can do the circles right there at the front of the heel. This is where the fascia is connected and where it's usually very tight. And go under the ball of the foot, under the toes. So again, you can do this longer and then you will cross over if you, if you can do that. Add a little more massaging of the sole of the foot with the opposite hand. And with the same side hand, you can support the top of the foot and then you will switch and go and massage the top of the foot. I went a little shorter on this foot so that I'm closer to the promised 20 minutes. You can absolutely do this longer. So just massaging the top of the foot feels so good, especially if you resist, if you support the sole of the foot with your other hand. So I hope you will uh, be able to do all these exercises and you will feel progress and benefit and do these exercises uh, maybe every day, maybe a few times every week. Thank you all for watching and practicing.